we're going to field questions from the student athletes and then um, take questions from coach. How y'all doing? This girl funny. It's mine. Is mine? What is what? Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to the Division I Women's Basketball National Championship post-game press conference featuring the LSU Tigers. We're going to hear from um, our student athletes. We're going to open it up for questions. We'll go to our front with Doug. Uh, Doug Farmer, Associated Press. Andrew, what does it mean to win the title here for LSU and to, quote, put a ring on it, so to speak? Um, I'm just... I'm, I'm super happy for the program first, but this is bigger than me. I mean, I had so many goals coming into LSU, but I didn't think I was going to win a national championship within my first year at LSU. I mean, I, I'm just happy for this team. Coach Mulkey, I appreciate you. I think, can't thank you for enough for giving me this opportunity to play under you and get better and just, I'm, I'm just happy right now. I'm going to take a question to our left. Uh, Maggie Hendricks from Bally Sports over here. I have two questions for you, Angel. One, are you going to get a new crown? Are you going to upgrade it? This one right here? You yeah. This, this, make, this, I, I mean, I don't yeah. know. I'm, NIO, I might, they, might, they might get me right. We're going to see. Okay, okay. Um, and then my other question, if I can open my phone, is um, we see you grab your teammates' heads and, and talk to them. When they're, especially when you're on the bench and they were, they're coming off and they played well. Saw so you do it with both Jasmine and Alexis. Um, what, what are you thinking in those moments? What do you want to get through to them? Just staying confident, whatever they, whatever's going on, especially when I'm on the bench, I'm seeing things that they might not see on the court. So just trying to help them and keep them confident within the game. Um, yeah. We're gonna stay to, go, we're gonna go to our right. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV for Angel and Jazz. Um, could you just talk about the job that Lex has done throughout the course of the tournament? Each game, she's improved, right? Her production, her defensive play, I guess. Just we know she's taking a lot of things personally, but she's performing at yeah. such a high level. Lex, she's a first rounder. I mean, I've said it all year. Um, I told Lex, don't turn on and off. You can kill every single possession that you can if you really want to. And I told her that. And she just gets into a mode where she's just unstoppable at some point. And she played a, def a great defensive game. I mean, it wasn't just all her offense tonight. It was her defense. She, Kaylin is a great player for sure. I mean, she still had 30, but we contained her as best as we could. And we just knew that the supporting cast, other players couldn't go off. So I think Alexis has just been a great player. I mean, overall, her career, she's just been, she's just been great. We're going to go to our left. Oh, I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah, backing off what Angel said, um, you know, Lex, she's, she's just a great player and even better person. And, you know, I can't even uh, – I'm just very proud of her. Um, she, she stepped up in big moments in the, SC, I mean, in the NCAA tournament. And um, I'm just really proud of her, and I know her future is bright. We're going to go to our left. Scott Rapoli with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Jasmine, um, uh, two questions. Uh, if – Maybe you had 55 points in high school or something like that, but was this the game of your life? And when you got up this morning, what did you think you could contribute to this game, you know, to this team? I would definitely say this is the game of my life because, I mean, I won a national championship on the biggest stage possible, you know, in college. Um, but when I woke up, I just wanted to win. I wanted to do anything that, you know, my team needed in this game. Um, you know, whether it was defense, you know, rebounding, just anything, supporting them. And, uh, you know, I, I scored tonight, and that's what, you know, pushed us and got us momentum. And I'm just proud of my teammates. To our right. Hey, Jazz Remy from the New York Times. Congrats on an amazing game. Um, I think a lot of people met you for the first time today. Um, what should the world know about you? Um... I mean, I'm Jasmine. I'm, uh, I've been working hard my whole life, and um, I came to LSU just to, you know, contribute and win a national title. I wanted to play on the Hall of Fame coach and play with great players. And, um, you know, hard work pays off, and, and God is great. You know, everybody's journey is different, and you should just embrace your journey. Um, and, 
you know, I can't I couldn't have wanted a better ending than for it to end like this. Jim Klein, Peter, with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Um, Alexis, uh, Iowa made their big push. You knew it was coming. What was going through your mind? It looked like you took over the game when, when they got within seven. No threes. <laughs> That's the only thing I kept telling my teammates. Whatever we do, we'll take twos over threes. Um, it was a great team. We knew that they were going to make runs. Coach Starkey, Coach Starkey had been telling us that in the huddle they're going to make runs, but we have to stay composed. And as a leader on the team, I have to keep everybody calm in those moments. It's, it's very important not to panic. And I think, you know, when I do go score in those moments, I just, it just settles my team down. It keeps everybody um, cool-headed and, 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 and level-headed in those moments. We're going to our right-hand side. Ainville Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, you mentioned those supporting players on this team. Obviously, you had a good game too, but how important was it to have them? And do you feel like that's kind of what made the difference today? Yeah, no, this wasn't about me. This is all about the supporting cast. Everybody has played a role all season. And tonight, just coming from the bench, Jazz, Poa, Samaya, they came and stepped up and played big. I mean, they didn't, uh, for Jazz, she probably didn't want to go out as a senior, go out the wrong way, and she wanted to win. So she did whatever it took to win. And Poa played a great job coming in when Alexis was in foul trouble. And Samaya, as a freshman, just getting big rebounds, being aggressive as, as well as she can. And I just, I just think everybody played their role. And that was our, our goal this year, just everybody piecing it together. Staying to our right. Alexa Philippe with ESPN. Um, for Alexis and Jasmine, you guys had talked about taking personally the way that South Carolina was guarded by Iowa and having that be something that you wanted to take advantage of today. And obviously we saw that with your shooting. So what about that was something that you wanted to exploit and how do you think you're able to get, uh, get that going today? I mean, I, I watch, we watched film on how they were playing South Carolina and I had an idea that they were probably gonna try to sag off us in the beginning. So, I mean, as a shooter, um, you know, when somebody sags off you, I mean, that's the green light. And um, that's, what I, that's what we capitalized off tonight. Um, I knew going into this game, Iowa wouldn't be able to guard us um, the same how they guarded South Carolina. Um, so I just kind of like, we just had to read the defense and, you know, make the right plays and not try to force anything just, and just be LSU, stay true to our identity and what got us here to this point. Um, and what I said was, I didn't say Iowa played disrespectful defense. I said to me personally, if someone was to sag off of me, then as a competitor and as someone who puts in the time and the hours and I dedicate time and perfecting my shot, then I would take that as disrespectful. So, and I had complimented Iowa. I said they have great defensive schemes. Like that, that was clever, that's intelligent. You should play that way. You have to play to your, your strengths and your weaknesses, and that's what Iowa does on defense. And I gave credit to them. They're, they're a great team, a great coaching staff. Kaitlyn's a great player. Um, she's literally changing the game. She's changing the game for us right now. Her and Angel, they're doing a great job. And I just want to make, make that clear that I, I give respect when it's due and I give credit when it's due. Go to our left, Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Angel, Twitter is awash right now with outrage. And really? you've talked before about your personality, <laughs> that you don't care. Out. And I just wondered what it's like to know that, I mean, so many people are talking about women's basketball. Isn't that a good thing? I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, all year I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, 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 the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood, I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's gonna speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more, than, it, was, it was bigger than me tonight. It was bigger than me. Twitter is gonna go in a rage every time. And I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like I've grown, helped grow women's basketball this year. I'm super happy and excited. So I'm looking forward to Celebrating in the next season. We're going to go to our, our right-hand side. Of the, yep, in the back. Uh, Gene Wong with the Washington Post. Jasmine, can you take us through your second quarter specifically when you couldn't miss and kind of with the feeling of being that locked in? Then for Alexis, when you see a teammate cooking like that, kind of what's going through your mind? 
it was a surreal moment. I mean, you know, every player dreams of being on a big stage like this and, you know, having a game of your life and for it to, you know, come into fruition, you know, it, it meant a lot. Um, I was just, you know, taking in the moment. I was just living in the moment. You know, usually I don't even celebrate after I make a shot, but tonight I just let it all out. I made it three. I was like, ah, I just had to let it out. You know, I didn't have nothing to lose. It was my senior, uh, my last game of my college career, and, you know, I ended it. <laughs> I ended it the right way. We're going to go to our left. Um, I was just super excited for Jazz. Um, as the PG, I always like temperature check my teammates just to see like where they head at. So in practice, I was like, um, you want to get some extra shots? Cause like we usually get extra shots in just me and her. And yeah, I feel like I can be a trainer someday. So I, I love like, you know, working, working, working with jazz. But in practice today, I asked her, I said, you want to get some extra shots up? She was like, nah, I'm good. I said, so you ready for, you ready for tonight? So she hit her first few shots. I would call the timeout. I said, stay right there. Stay locked in. Whatever headspace you're in right now, do not check out and just stay ready. And, you know, she gave us a, a huge spark off the bench today. She was, she, she was the game changer tonight. And thank you, Jazz, uh, for being a senior and being who you are, too. Appreciate you, bro. We're going to go to our left. Lauren Moses, Valley Sports. Um, we always hear about what teams learn about themselves at the end of the season. I'm curious what you guys have learned about yourselves <laughs> as individuals this season. It don't matter what you go through. It's about the end goal. As a team, we've been through some things. We've been through a lot of things this year. And all season, we were trying to figure out how, how we were going to piece it together. And no matter what, the biggest goal was to get a national championship. So we put everything else to the side and came together as a team and got to that goal. So just learning each other and just knowing that it doesn't matter about anything else. We got a lot of big personalities on the team. We go at it all, all the time. But at the end of the day, we love each other and we're sisters. And we got to where we want it now. We'll go to our far back on the right-hand side. Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Ladies, what does it mean for all three of y'all to be a part of this program in just year two when the national championship with Coach Mulkey, who obviously is from Louisiana, none of you all are from Louisiana, but what does it mean to y'all? For me, I mean, we just made history. Like, we're going into history books, you know. Um, it, it just means a lot, and I'm excited. Ben Rouge, I know Ben Rouge lit right now. I can't wait to get back. We're going to have a parade, whatever. Um, you know, we in the history books. That, that's, that's all I got to say. It means a lot to be able to do it for the fans, to be able to do it for the history, the ones who came before us. For Coach Moki, just her being in her second year. Um, myself, my journey. And for the nine new pieces, like how do we piece it together in such a short amount of time? Um, I think I think we're pretty incredible, and I'm gonna that's kind of like answering your question. That's what I think of this team. I think we're amazing. A um, lot of different personalities, but you know, we we piece it together at the right time. We start clicking at the right time, and that's and that's what matters the most. Super happy to be here at LSU. Um, I told you I was I was gonna leave out on top. We're going to stay to our right. Howard, go ahead. Howard McDowell at the next. Angel, just uh, congratulations, Thank first you. of all. The moments that you're talking about and you were talking about earlier that made Twitter blow up, how conscious are you of having them be able to fit, be able to be your authentic self in that moment? And sort of how, how do you kind of craft it in the moment to be able to make sure that people understand who your authentic self is? I don't care about anybody else and what they have to say about me. That's the difference between me and a lot of people. I, I, I don't. And the biggest goal for me is a national champion. I don't want I don't care to be all American. I don't care to be a defensive player of the year, player of the year. The biggest goal is to be a national champion. And that's what I did. And that's what I, I can just brag on because at the end of the day it's it's a team effort. And regardless, I'm gonna be me, but I can't do it without the, the girls here and I can't do it without the rest of my teammates and my coaches. So Twitter can say what they want to say. I love Twitter and I love reading those comments. I have all the screenshots of what everybody has said about me all season. And now what are you gonna say now? <laughs> we're going to go to our back, Actually, right? 
Marissa would pass the ball. So Kim, Lex, um, it's, I know it's always been a full circle moment for you two, but how does it feel to win with each other? Well, I can't even got it back. You know, I lost, you know, I got dismissed 2018, 2019. That's the year that they won a national championship. Coach, we got it back. I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity. You've always been a winner in my eyes ever since I was 12 years old. Um, it's hard to explain the feeling. It's kind of like, um, in a way, Coach Moki's um, an amazing person. She knows how to get the best out of me. She's been knowing me since I was a child, literally. So I, it's, I don't know if I'll ever be able to have the type of relationship with another coach that I have with Coach Moki because it's, 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 it's special. It's different. We're going to take our last question for the student athletes on our far left-hand side. Patricia Caputo, KLSU. Um, for Alexis, on Friday, you had mentioned that it didn't hit you quite yet that you were going to play on a stage as big as this one. When did it hit you that you had won? Was it after the buzzer? Was it when you were cutting down the nets? Oh, I'm going to be honest. When, I, when my main ranges started falling, I was like, oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's nothing against my teammates. My teammates are over. I said, it's my time. I'm just not going to let this slip out of our, not out of our hands. Like, we're too close. I just smell. I just tasted it at the time. Yeah. Even when we were, like, down by seven, I was like, it's not happening. Like, and that's not me being cocky at all. That's just me being just knowing the moment, getting a feel for, for the game, and, and just being that senior leader and not letting my teammates down, Coach Moki down. LSU, the fans who came, drove hours, flew out here. Just I, I just was so determined to not let nobody down tonight. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And congratulations again. Yeah, that trophy heavy. I don't want to let somebody else carry it. Grant, use them big muscles. This trophy's heavy. Let me get it. Yeah. I'll get it. Yeah. That's heavy. Got it, baby. She kind of made that look easy. She picked she? it up like she got a rebound, huh? <laughs> At this time, we'll open up for questions for Coach. We'll start with Lindsay. Hey, Kim. Lindsay from USA Today. Uh, I noticed when the players were talking, you, I think you were looking at the stat sheet, just writing yes, some stuff I'm down. Yes, I'm just now well, getting to take some notes before all of you knowledgeable media ask me all the things you know about X's and O's. Oh, so I just I'm wondered if ready you would for you. tell us what your notes were. If worse, Did something jump out at you in particular? Every game I just take a stat sheet and I look at things. And so I just, this is the first time I've been able to look at a stat sheet. We're going to go to the front with Doug. Hey, Kim. Right in front of you. Yes. Doug Feinberg, the AP. What does it mean to win a title in your home state now and get LSU its first ever men's or women's basketball championship? With about a minute and 30 to go, I couldn't hold it. Got very emotional. That's really not like me until that final buzzer goes off, but I knew we were going to hold on and win this game. And I don't know if it's the mere fact that we are doing this in my second year back home. I don't know if it was the fact that I am home. I don't know if it was looking across there at my daughter and my grandchildren. I don't know if it was looking across at Ellis. I don't know what it was, but I lost it. So that should tell you what I think about it. Very, very emotional and tears of joy. I'm going to go to our back on the left. Over here, Coach. Uh, Matthew Bruni with on three. Uh, you hold Caitlin Clark to nine of 22 shooting, obviously 30 points. But what can you say about the job Alexis Morris did on her? Probably what you want to write. You just want to give me, you want me to give you a little reinforcement, right? Because I'd say, what did you think? Alexis Mars guarded two of the finest women's basketball players that our game has. She did it against Amore with Virginia Tech, and she did it tonight. She didn't, she didn't keep them from scoring. They're that good. But what she did is she made every shot they took a little bit maybe more difficult instead of easy. We knew Caitlin was going to shoot the ball. We knew she was going to make her threes. But we couldn't give her the 10 to 12 points she always gets off of layups. I, I don't know if I'm right, but I think she may have only gotten one inside the arc tonight. She got free throws, and she had those threes.
but I'd have to I'd have to break this stat sheet down. She didn't get many layups in the arc. And Alexis, she guarded two of the best our game has to offer. We're going to go to our back and our right. Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Coach Mulkey, all year long, you've said we've only won ball games. We haven't won national <laughs> championships. Now you hang a banner. Kind of what? What are the emotions for you, and also the embrace with Flage there on the court? And I think that was with about 50 seconds to go, and coaches are hollering, "Get off the court!" And I said, "Don't tell me what to do. I'm fixing to win another championship." Chess, I think back to my press conference when Scott Woodward introduced me as LSU's coach. And the number of people that were in that PMAC, the governor, the politicians, the people who watched me grow up. And I made a statement and asked everybody to turn around and look at those final four banners. Nowhere on there did it say national champion. And that's what I came home to do. So I'm relieved because I don't have to think about that anymore. Um, to see after the ball game, the former LSU player, Simone Augustus crying and seeing all those people that really were a part of all those final fours but just couldn't get over the hump. To walk down the hall and see my former ba uh, Baylor players that won championships with me waiting for me, to look in the stands and see my former Louisiana Tech players. It's emotional. It's emotional. And um, I am so happy um, I really don't know how to explain it. Just a, a, a deep gratitude and happiness. Um, and yes, it does matter being back home. I won Louisiana. I won championships at Louisiana Tech. I looked out there at those banners hanging at practice the other day here, and Baylor's the first banner that's hanging. And underneath there, there are three national championships, and then there's a school in between my Louisiana Tech two national championships. And I thought, Kim, you're getting old. You're getting old. We're going to go to our back, Nancy. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Kim, back here. Right here. Um, somebody was asking Angel about this, that you know, the conversations that there are on Twitter, people are now raging about the refs. I have no clue, so you might as well no, no, go no, away no. from social media, because I don't know what y'all are talking about but blowing up Twitter. People are, are debating the refereeing. They're uh, just talking about And I'm just wondering, is that this is the stuff we normally hear of with the men's game. Is it good that the women's game has reached this point that these conversations are happening? Look. Are you basically asking me what I think of social media? <laughs> I like y'all better than I do social media. So if you're on social media and hiding behind a computer, I don't like you. If you want to face me eyeball to eyeball and disagree with me on things, I respect you more. I know nothing about Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I have accounts. You will see that I have accounts. I don't touch those. My coaches do it for me. So I can't help you in any area of what was said. I looked at Alexis and go, what did she say? What is the blow up about? And quite frankly, I don't care. I have no, I waste no time on all that stuff. It just, but it's the world we live in. Uh, but guys, I, I just, I'm too old. I'm too old to worry about all that stuff. Now, if she does something or we're doing something that embarrasses the program, my coaches and my administrators usually help me address that. So, but to answer your question about the game, I love the fact that um, they told me our tickets were more expensive than the men's tickets. There you go. Talk to me along those lines. I like that. Uh, and, and you know what else? Taylor Swift's in town, and we still sold this place out. But give kudos to the four teams that were here. Those four teams' fan base bases are unbelievable. You think about it. They showed up, and that's what you want to see. I'm going to go to our right, Alexa. Alexa Philippi with ESPN over here. Um, can you speak to what Jasmine was able to do 
off the bench hitting those shots and just what her journey has been like, especially within this tournament from going to starting, coming off the bench and being able to come through in the clutch moment like today? Well, Jasmine wasn't benched for any reason other than I needed bigger bodies with some of the teams we played in the playoffs. And then I just kept that lineup um, because it was just, it was flowing better defensively. Jasmine may be the second best pure shooter that I've ever coached in my career. She can just light it up. And when she made those first couple, I thought, well, first of all, when we got in foul trouble and we had three starters sitting over there early in the first half or the first and second quarter, I thought, just keep it close till I can get them back on the floor. That's what's going through your mind. And then Poa hits a three, Jasmine hits another three, Samaya's in there battling. Um, they, did, they won the game for us. The game was won, in my opinion, in the second quarter when those three young ladies, Samaya Smith, a freshman, last tier POA, a first time transfer from junior college, and Jasmine Carson, her last and only year playing for me. When those guys got in there and they extended the lead and scored with Iowa, I thought, this is gonna be a fun night. They didn't just keep it close, they went in and they attacked. And guys, we scored 102 points. That has to be some kind of record, okay? So much for my hollering defense and rebounding, right? That's a lot of points. Piecing it together there. Um, what does this do for the future? You know, you talked about when you got there, kind of selling the dream and getting people to, to buy in. Not a, not a pressure question, but how, how big can you grow this? Well, it doesn't get any bigger than this. We grew it, and I, I say this, you know this, Michael, y'all have been to the games. We grew this last year. And it was kind of scary because I kept trying to tame that monster. I said, we may be feeding this monster too early. But the crowds just kept getting bigger and bigger. And the student section, guys, is, is off the charts at LSU. And I... I we're national champions in year two. And we're not all seniors. We lose four outstanding seniors. But the core of your, your group are young and, and underclass, and you hope they stay. Uh, Lord knows every time you turn around, you got to deal with people in the transfer portal. But you signed the number one recruiting class in the country. And this, that was before we won a national championship. We haven't even won an SEC championship. We're working. We're working. And when they come to visit LSU, I can't describe it to you. People love winners at LSU, fans off the charts. Um, I can tell you, I don't want one negative thing written if we don't win a national championship next year, okay? I'm telling y'all in advance, they're hard to do. I want to stay to our right. Cassandra Negley with Yahoo Sports right here. Your players have talked a lot this week about how their love for one another led them to this point, but a year ago they weren't even together. So how did you see that love develop this season? Well, I think we've got a locker room full of kids who like tough love. <laughs> I don't have a locker room of a bunch of passive ones, as you know. They will tell you how they feel. They'll talk trash on the floor. Um, you have to be a very strong coach to coach this many personalities. Um, and I say that not to pat myself on the back, but I don't have a problem getting in their face. I call that first time out because Flage turned it over a couple times. Kateri Poole turned it over, and we didn't come over there singing Kumbaya. We came over there and challenged them. And um, they just bless me. They're ballers. They get on each other. I don't know how we did it. Uh, defense and rebounding carried us a lot this year. I can't tell you defense carried us today, but you're playing against a generational talent in Clark. 
So you knew you better score the ball with them. And we scored the ball from all positions today. Go ahead, Howard. Tim, ha Howard Magdal at the Nets. Um, you've, I'm over here. OK. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you've done things in this game that very few people ever have. You came to LSU to win a national title, and now you've done that as well. You're doing it in a new way, though. You're doing it with nine new people. You're doing it using the transfer portal. And I guess I just wonder for you, as you think about your career, does winning a national title like you did here ahead of schedule, the way you said, make you feel like um, that speeds up you wanting to wind down, or does it make you want to coach for even longer than maybe you thought prior to this year? Well, I don't ever put a timetable on coaching. I was never going to be a coach. I got talked into it by the president of Louisiana Tech University, Dr. F.J. Taylor. He started the program there, and he wouldn't take no for an answer, and thank God he didn't. He knew more what I was supposed to be doing than I did. I played for legendary coach Leon Barmore, Pat Summit in the 84 Olympics. You follow leaders that fit your personality. And if as a leader doesn't fit your personality, you go find a leader that does. I want you to look up there on those stairs right there. There's my AD, there's my president, there's my administration. That's who I get to work for every day. That's who I get to work for. They don't try to control you. They make you follow the rules and they get out of your way. And they don't miss a thing when it comes to helping me build a program. There are things they do I don't want to do. I don't want to have to learn all the things that they have to do. But I knew when I came back to Louisiana and I had my first meeting with Scott Woodward, really, and he said something to me and I said, this is where I'm going to end it. He's my kind of leader. We talk the same language. I don't know if that's a Louisiana thing. He's from Baton Rouge. I'm from Hammond. Um, but he's, he just, he gets it. He gets it. He gets out of the way. You see, he doesn't have to be and doesn't want to be the most important person in the athletic department. But he's the most powerful person in the athletic department. He can fire any of us, and he's our boss. He wouldn't even go out there tonight and cut the net down. I begged Dr. Tate to cut the net down with his LSU jacket on. Those are the kind of leaders that I want to be around. Coach, we're going to take our final question to the left. Patricia Caputo, KLSU. Now that you've won a championship with Alexis Morris, can you talk about her growth not only as a player but also as a person? Alexis Morris, known that child since she was in the seventh grade, went to a private school there in Beaumont, Texas. Came to my camps many years. That smile, that spunk, never, ever has that child ever disrespected me in any way. Ever. And when I had to dismiss her, it was for the sake of the locker room and the sake of making a tough decision to not lose your team. Those decisions a lot of coaches don't want to make. And I had sleepless nights over it because I loved Lexus. There are many people you dismiss from a team and you say, good riddance. You're a cancer in the locker room. She was not. She wandered to a couple schools here and there, never spoke to her the entire time that she was at Rutgers or, or A&M. Couldn't, the rules don't allow it, but when I got the LSU job, she basically said, Coach, I'm, I need you in my life. I'm coming back to play for you. You're thinking, this is a kid who owned her mistake. This is a kid who never blamed a coach. How many of those articles do you write? Everybody likes to go, oh, the coach is a bad person. Oh, the coach did this. Alexis would never let him write that story. She did it to herself. And you wonder why some coaches will take a kid like that back? That is a valuable lesson for all of us as parents. Parents want to blame coaches. And look where she's sitting today. Look where she is sitting today. 
What a remarkable story. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Coach. All right. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you.